Hi guys, um, welcome back. I'm Dr. Elizabeth Kiriakou and we're just going to continue on with our lecture on friction. And right now we're going to take a look at um, impending motion. Okay, so what's this all about? Impending motion. So remember when we had a box and it was um, in contact with a surface? And we had a, we said that there was a, at the centre of the box, there was a weight force, mg. And on the uh, normal to the surface, we have a normal force. And that is always perpendicular to the contact surface. Okay? So... In the first case, so one, when there is no forces acting on this, so no horizontal force, then we're going to have mg is going to be equal to n. And how do we know this? If we look at our equations for equilibrium, we can say that in the x direction, some of the forces in the x equals zero, and some of the forces in the y direction is going to equal um, minus mg plus m. So then we're going to have mg equals m. So in this case, mg sits directly above n. The next case is what happens when there is a force applied to this box? So when a horizontal force is applied, if they call it f, um, it's applied That creates the normal force M to shift. Okay? And it shifts towards the direction of motion. Yep. So Let's draw our box again. So here we have our box, and we know that mg, and here's our contact surface. We know that mg is always going to be at the centre of the box. We have a force, F, pushing the box. I'm going to draw some x and y axes here. And we know that we're going to, if we have a, um, a force F, we know we're going to have a friction force in the opposite direction, so friction. And we're also going to have a normal force at this surface, N. So this is my friction. We know that N is my normal force. So what actually happens here? This N is no longer sitting directly underneath the box. And what's going to happen to it is, it's actually going to move over here. It is N. And there's going to be a distance from the centre to here called x and that is the shift. So, up here I only had two equations for equilibrium that I was going to use. But now that I'm introducing um, 
a distance, and here I'm going to have height. Now we have a moment equation. So here I'm going to have some of the forces in the x has to equal zero. Some of the forces in the y has to equal zero. And some of the moments we're in a point has to equal zero. Okay. So, in actual fact, what we can do now is we call this point here point zero. We can actually summate all the forces in the x and the y direction. Shall we take a look at that? Let's clean up up here and solve it. for equilibrium. I've got my free body diagram and now I can say um, some of the forces in the x direction has to equal zero. So in the x direction that's positive we're going to have f minus my frictional force and we can call that equation one and then some of the forces in the y direction equals zero and we're going to have n going positive minus mg and that's two. So what's my equation for friction? So for friction I've got mu n and it's this n right? Same n. So I could actually substitute it into here and get rid of this friction force. So, we need to find out what the shift is, right? Or, we could find out what the height of the force is. And how do we do that? We can say that some of the moments around point zero has to equal zero. And if we're going around this point here, we're going to have mg is going to rotate around this way. So that's going to be our positive. So I'm going to have mg, and my distance is x. And f is going to rotate around our point in the negative direction. So I'm going to have minus f, and my height is h. So that's my perpendicular distance force. And that's equation three. So pretty much now with these three equations I can solve any variable in this problem. So in the first case that we looked at, that's when we're looking at sliding. So if an object slides, there is only going to be a motion with force. If your box is going to tip over, then you're going to have a rotation and you'll have a moment. Because here, we have a moment occurring between this force and this force. So we can do a quick example. So this question is actually um, in your 
lecture notes. And the question says, um, a box is pushed with a force, and if we keep increasing the push force, will the box begin to slide or tip? Slide or tip. So let's take a look. So here's our box. And we have a surface. And we have our MG weight force. And here we have F. And they tell us that the coefficient of friction U is 0.2 and the mass of the box is 60 kilograms. Okay? So all we need now is some dimensions on this. So the height of the box is 4 metres. The width of the box is 3 metres. And the height of the force also three meters. So in the case of slip, what's it going to look like? So if I draw my free body diagram, here's my box and I have mg which is 60 times 9.81. I'm going to have my force that's pushing the box. And here I'm going to have a normal force. And if my box is going in this direction, that means my friction goes in the opposite direction. And let's draw some axes on this. Y and X. And let's resolve some forces. So what do we have? Um, some of the forces in the X direction equals zero. So in the X direction, I have um, F minus my frictional force. And F is going to equal mu N. So I need to actually um, calculate N. And how do I calculate N? Well, I can actually use um, some of the forces in the Y. So some of the forces in the Y direction equal zero and I'm going to have N minus MG. I know what MG is. So N is going to be 60 times 9.81. So N is going to equal is going to be equal 588 newtons. Alright, so now we can find out what F equals by substituting this back into there. So F is going to equal 0 0.2 because they told us 588 newtons which equals 364.6 newtons. And that's for sleep. All right. So, what happens if this box is going to tip instead? I feel like I used up too much of the light board. So, I'm just draw a free body diagram here for tipping. So, if I draw my free body diagram again. I'm going to have is my box. I know I've got mg at, at the center. I have my force f. I know that it has a height of three meters, and I'm going to have my force here, just my normal force, at the point here, and I'm going to calculate. This distance is going to be, well, if my box is 3 metres, this is exactly half, so I can say it's 1.5 metres. And the height of my box is 4 metres. And this is going to be my tipping point. 
Yeah. And I've got one thing left, is my friction of force. So, what can I do? I think all I need to do here is take the sum of the moments around N to find F. So I can say that some of the moments around this point, we'll call that A, equals zero. And I'm going to have this force is going in this direction, so that's going negative, so I'm going to have minus F, and my perpendicular distance is three metres. And then this force, my mg, my weight force is going positive. So I'm going to have positive mg times 1.5. So if I calculate that out, I'm going to have F equals 294 newtons. So, I've got two numbers. This is tipping and this is slipping. Which one's going to occur first? Tipping, sorry, slip, and tipping. So, if F tip is less than F slip, or sliding, then the box will tip first. Because it needs less force to move. So, that's a, just a pretty much a summary of um, whether a box is sliding or whether it's tipping.